Rich Eisen from the Rich Eisen Show, the Emmy-nominated Rich Eisen Show, also with the uh, NFL Network, just uh, buzzed us to give us his thoughts on Tony Romo. Richie Rich, how are you? DP is always listening to you on the way to work. Thanks, Heard sir. your uh, conversation with the Danettes. Um, and, you know, you, you obviously we don't know what Romo's going to be like until he's on the air, right? I mean, until we... He understands in a, in a live game that you have to get in and out and be concise, as you point out. Um, but in terms of what his personality is off the air and not in some sort of combative uh, uh, posture, maybe with the media, you know, I, I emceed a chalk talk with him and Steve Young the night before Super Bowl 50 in San Francisco. And he was beyond terrific not only knowing everything inside and out about Denver's defense and Carolina's defense, but what Peyton Manning's strengths and weaknesses in his, at that point of his career were Cam Newton at that point of his career, obviously as being an MVP at the the time, but he was terrific. He was concise. He was funny. He was self deprecating. Um, He was uh, on top of it all passionate. Mm -hmm. And I turned to Steve young afterwards and I said to him, wow, I mean, this is somebody who can do this for a living. And he looked at me and he goes, he's one of the most knowledgeable quarterbacks that's playing the game right now. And the one last thing that really left a lasting impression on me was one of two things. Either he studied his head off for the chalk talk and was prepared for this chalk talk, or he was just so into it and is such a football junkie that, that he is ready to roll for something like this. I, I, I firmly believe it. But do you think his value would be better served as a studio analyst where you actually, he could break down things. I can see him uh, as opposed to just listening to his voice where, you know, that gets lost when you're doing, I know you're doing the number one game, uh, but it feels right. like if there's value to Tony Romo, you might see that value more people tuning into the pregame. We're going to tune into the game no matter who's doing it. But you don't always turn well, into I mean, the pregame. Look, I mean, you, you know better than anybody about what the value of, a, of an analyst in a pregame show is. But they already have a quarterback who's been to a Super Bowl and an MVP sitting on the set. And unless you don't need a second one on that set, mm-hmm. unless Boomer wanted to go in the booth or CBS wanted to put Boomer in the booth with Mance, I mean, they, they if Romo is free... And you also know, Dan, seeing in person, certainly that Thursday night game we did with NBC, uh, Dallas at Minnesota. Uh, I, I mean, it was remarkable how many Cowboy fans showed up in, in Minnesota um, in December. And, and you, can't put, you, can't, you can't discount how popular Tony Romo is. And if they wanted to replace Phil, if that was something they considered was an issue in their number one booth and Romo is free... You know, obviously, it's going to take him some time to get his chops up to be a number one game analyst to be in that live action. But, but I mean, he was he was confident. His voice was, I mean, all of it. I turned to Young and I'm like, this this guy's ready to go, and he fully agreed. I mean, and that's obviously just uh, at, a, at a social event at a, a Super Bowl night, but. Um, I, I'm sure CBS must have saw something like that in him. Do you have a problem with him jumping the line? No, but that happens to everybody, doesn't it? At some point, you know. And any, do you, like what? What are you going to do? I mean, would they put him on the 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 B team or C team? Uh, I mean, I don't know. maybe he's rotten. Do you think that we'll be sitting here a year from now talking about that? That Romo won't have an opinion. He won't have a take. Um, that he can't. He can't get the words out. It's a horrible watch. I, I don't. I would. But I would go the other way. Yeah, I, I would say that he's going to be really good. Yeah, I think he'll make the transition. I think uh, my only concern was, you know, how much pressure is attached to that first game, how he reacts to that. He doesn't second guess himself. It's it's like playing quarterback. You know, you're gonna you're you're never going to be ready for the game until you get into the game, and then once he gets it, right. the game will slow down for him just like it did for him as a quarterback. He'll find his spots. I'm sure Troy Aikman will give him some advice. He'll do his homework, and Nance will set him up nicely. 
Um, so I, I, I don't think that that's going to be a big deal. I think the bigger deal is if I'm hiring Tony Romo, at what point do I worry that somebody calls him and says, hey, such and such just went down with an injury, season-ending injury. We want to know if you want to play. And I think that that'll happen this year. Oh, that, that, that's true. And he didn't shut the door. I mean, he, he gave a very Jordan Farvian type response to the percentage of his retirement possibility. And, um, you know, and, and, and obviously if he's got a Cowboy game, that's going to be something he's going to have to address uh, to a fan base that's tuning in to watch the other team play. Um, you know, and, and you couldn't have hit the nail more on the head that many people come out of, of football or whatever sport they're playing and think it's very easy to just talk about it. Yeah. Um, and then, and then they fall flat on their face. And there was one player, um, you know, one hoops player. I remember when I was at the mothership to use your phrase that, um, that he was terrific in the meetings, but was terrible (laughs) on the air. And, and we found out the reason why is because he could curse his head off in the meetings and had to remove the not safe for work language (laughs) when he's on the air and, and couldn't put a sentence together. So oh, there's man. many different ways to make the transition and how there could be pitfalls. I just don't think Romo's going to have it. Thanks for the phone call, Rich. Always, DP. Take care. That. That's uh, Rich Eisen. His show was nominated for a sports Emmy. It follows this show coming up at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on uh, DirecTV, the Audience Network, Channel 239. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience. <laughs> 